Hey guys, let me know what you think by liking and commenting, and it really helps me and this channel out when you subscribe, so please click that button. Thanks a bunch! Alright everyone, today's episode is brought to you by Super Smooth Hobby Lubricants. Super Smooth Hobby Lubricants are 100% synthetic, and they come in medium oil versions, light oil, and PTFE or Teflon grease in this handy tube. These are very recent and modern formulations. The company that actually manufactures the oil and grease for Super Smooth is a very, very well-known company, and Super Smooth worked with their chemists to make sure that these would fulfill the needs of modern hobbyists. These formulas are specifically designed not to gum up, and they're designed also not to attract any kind of grease or dirt or dust. So remember Super Smooth. It's slicker than smooth. Welcome back everyone. And today's episode is about these North Bank line brass business cars. I really like business cars. I, yeah, I've been in them. They're really cool, of course. I guess you can actually own these things now. This one I purchased from Resourced Rails. It's kind of unfortunate when uh, this came out. I actually had COVID and I was in COVID isolation and I had really, really bad internet and I was supposed to pay for this. It took me a little while longer than I wanted to pay for this, but he was cool about it, he understood. So this is going to forever be known as the COVID car. But of course, luckily I was over COVID by the time I actually received this and got out of quarantine. So here it is. It is for my CB and Q set. It is absolutely lovely. They're, they made two of these. This is the one that kind of matched my set a little bit better. The other one is nickel plated and I mean, it looks nickel plated. It looks great, don't get me wrong, but this one's going to match my lineup a little bit better. So here it is. I will sort of spin it around for you can see the rear detail. Um, yeah, it's gonna be wonderful. It looks like it's actually got uh, rear ditch lights is what those are gonna be or, or some sort of um, light to let people know that this thing's coming at them, spin it around a little bit. And these are lit with a capacitor from the factory. So I think it'll be easier to show you this interior um, while it's lit. I think it'll stand out better, but it, it already it's already nice in that it uses two color plastic, which I think is great. I think up to now it's been one color for a lot of manufacturers and um, it just it looks sort of drab. I even had a Marklin Insider that only used one color on the interior and I just thought that just didn't look quite right. If you look it actually has window blinds that's that's a nice touch I've seen it on a few cars but none done quite so well as this. Uh, if, if you look around here this is obviously an extremely extremely high quality piece. Now these weren't cheap uh, they weren't cheap by any stretch of the imagination. And uh, for a little while, I'm like, oh my gosh, I really want to pay this for a business card. But when I started um, looking at some of the examples from this factory, I'm like, yeah, it looks like they might be worth it. Not only that, it, it seems like it's going to be a brass model that actually runs on modern track and won't have any problems with DCC, especially since they put this capacitor in here. So I'm like, sure, I'll give it a shot. And I am... Really happy with that decision. I mean, it starts a little bit to look at the outbound money for this, but it's kind of a buy once, cry once scenario. I'll never regret having one of these, and there will be very little ways to top this in the future. You can see it even has these, I mean, you can see so clearly there's this texture and this corrugation. I haven't seen this car in real life but just the fact that they obviously took a lot of time and a lot of care and put it into this uh, makes it worth it. I mean, all these little tiny details on the underframe, of course, um, I, I guess for this price and for it being brass, I just have no doubts that they put a lot of effort into this car. But I thought to myself, you know what, what I really wanted on top of this, I had another executive train I'm building and that's for Burlington Northern. And I didn't pre-order this Burlington Northern, but luckily Adam Pomerantz at the brass basement. I don't, I don't know what this is, I don't know what that's for, there's no search. Adam Pomerantz, who's a good guy, great to deal with. He had one of these Burlington Northern. So of course 
I was going to pick that up. And I, I just sort of bought it sight unseen because I, I have this train that I'm creating, and so I need this. But I thought, oh, is it just going to be a repainted version of the same thing? But no, in fact, it is not just a repainted version. It is a totally different car. That's cool, as in windshield wipers on the rear grass. But look at the um, detail here on this rear protective gate uh, on that's that's incredible let's see if i can get this closer for you without giving you a seizure well let me just flip this around i will uh, come back to this when i do a more detailed review again it has window shades my goodness this is a really really nice piece of brass work oh my gosh they did a great job on this and again they, they obviously didn't um, spare. They, they didn't spare any expense in creating these. I mean, I feel like I've got my money's worth for these, and I'll always like looking at them. Um, of course, one thing I'm curious is if these are going to line, particularly this Burlington Northern, is going to line up with the Consus that I already have purchased for. In fact, this is the last car I kind of need to at least have something of a Consus. So I'm curious if the paint. Yeah, you know, it's like the, the, as much effort as they put into the actual body of this thing and all the details, is the paint going to match the consist I already have and what I already purchased? And these have been sitting around for a while because I didn't have anything to put at the end of it. Uh, we'll see. But here are the two together. And again, you can see these are just not the same car here. Um, they're, they're different in all regards. They're different in the windows. The styling, um, I mean, these are all separate. So I guess they didn't even have to, uh, maybe there was some cost savings for running these together. I mean, the, the trucks are different and everything, but um, it looks like these all just wanted to come out at once and look at that, they're, they're completely different. So um, they didn't just simply do like a River Rossi and just copy one car and just paint it differently. Nope, these are all separate. Now, I do have another business car for CB&Q, and that's this Kato one, and it's the one on the top here. So if you wanted to see if it's worth paying the extra amount for this North Bank line one, then, well, you can see here, obviously, they're different. Um, I don't know if the CB&Q one put out by Kato is even real. I don't know if they just simply repainted something they already had, but um, I'm not a big stickler about those things. For the most part, if it looks good from three feet, I'm happy. And certainly the Kato one will do that. And as a plastic model, um, I think it's very good, right? It's, it's very, very good. I don't have 100% of the grab irons installed yet. I was actually working on this when um, the North Bank Line 1 came in. But if you're interested um, and you're trying to figure out, well, I need a CB and Q, is it better to pick up the Kato one for a lot less? I mean, you can have these things for under $100, um, or is it worth picking up um, NBL? And I, I guess they're going to rerun these. So if that's what you want, you can um, get one. So here you go. I'm not going to make this decision for you. Whatever is best for you. I don't, um, I don't begrudge people for running $5 train sets. I don't begrudge people for running $20,000 train sets. I just, I just want everyone to run what they have, I think. Someone took time to create it. I hope they run it. Well, anyway, here's the um, Walther's um, Burlington Northern cars. These are the ones I purchased. They already had them. I just haven't taken them out of the box yet. But now that I've actually got some sort of end car, I can actually do that. So let's take a look at them together. And Oh, my goodness. What do you know? The whites are a little bit different. The white is warmer, but the greens look almost dead on and for what it's worth if you see any difference it's actually not visible your eye will kind of correct things it's actually looking at directly for the most part so there is a slight shade difference a slight warmth difference in the video but uh, in real life it's it's unnoticeable so um, you can create a really nice consist using Walther's cars and I have River Rossi ones too, but there's uh, I think no way that I would attach one of these River Rossi cars to this beautiful, beautiful um, business car. 
Okay, let's take a look at the interiors a little bit more closely. I put it on the track and it's lit up and you can see that it has ditch lights now. Um, those, I am not sure if they're directionable. I'm running DCC and I'm running 19 volts. So they're a little bit bright, but I think they should be fine. Again, I can't get over the little time here in this uh, protective grating. I, I just can't get over how much time they spent doing that. That's lovely. Uh, it looks wonderful. Um, you know, and it's metal. If it was in plastic, it, it wouldn't be as round. I mean, I, it's one of the most impressive pieces I have. If you look here, it's actually multi. I said it was two colored earlier, but it's actually more colors than that. Um, the simulated wood is brown, but if you um, look, the uh, if you're going to see another table here, there's actually white to make it look like there is trimming around the wood. See the. Uh, it looks like a real table in that sense. So it's blue for the seats, but then the table legs and it looks like the trim is um, brown and then the tabletop is white. Just one of the nicest interiors I have. I can't think of a nicer one that uses three colors. And as we go down here, you can see that the doors are detailed. Very, very nice. If you remember from earlier, you are able to see some of the wiring in there, but I don't think that's too egregious. Um, you know, I've got to put it somewhere, um, yeah, but the fact that they tried to keep it out of the way, I think is pretty special. Now, if you want to take these apart and put little people inside, the shells are just held on by little screws. It shouldn't be a problem at all. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the CBQ. It's, it's again, um, here it has the actual light on top um, and that appears to be directional um, and the reason why is it, it seems like it turns on and off um, if I just power down the capacitor doesn't keep it lit so I'm pretty sure that's directional um, and again here we have the interiors um, they're blue um, for the seats I'm not sure if both of these had blue seats I, I'm not an expert on these enough to know whether these seats were actually blue but as we get closer to some of the seats here, you can see that they're actually textured, right? Just like as if they were made out of some sort of cloth or some sort of leather, very nice touch. And again, we have the three colors, the white tabletop, the blue chairs, and it has the um, wood color trim around it. Here we have some curtains, right? It, really nice. Um, I don't know if it's quite a thousand dollars nice, but it sure is close. Um, because I, I just don't think we're gonna see too many manufacturers put this kind of time into details that you really can't see unless you specifically go up close to it. All right, let's, let's weigh them. They are heavy. That's one thing I didn't express and you can't see obviously, but these things are heavy. They are, gosh, this one's almost a pound. So 14.4 ounces and that's it. This is not a pound, so in 407 grams for everybody else in the rest of the world. So that's pretty darn hefty for a car. Let's put the Burlington Northern one on here and it's even heavier, very slightly heavier, but it is heavier. So you know these are quality pieces. They are metal through and through, um, except for the interiors, but they obviously couldn't get them this heavy unless they put some real effort into it. Okay, let's try the coupler height. Hopefully for this price, they should be perfect and that one looks pretty much dead on. I'm not testing the rear couplers because I, I would have no use for them, but I'm sure they'll work out just fine. Let's get this on there, there we go. Burlington Northern is good too. We're good all the way around on coupler height. All right, let's try the built-in capacitor, see how much time it gives us after we shut the power down to the track. All right, pretty reasonably sized capacitor. I don't know how many of you are gonna have dirty track or, or unpowered or bad points that's gonna cause it to wanna stay on for a minute. So it, that should be plenty adequate.
Okay, well, let me give you my final thoughts on these. I'll go ahead and run it around the track so that you can see it as it goes around. What was that? Weird, there's a hitch? Just sounded like it paused really quick coming around the curve. Oh well, I guess it shouldn't be a problem. Okay, well, as I was saying, this is a... Oh, world? Uh, what's going on? Um, hang on. Oh, dang! Okay, so something clearly isn't right. Uh, is it the new car, though? Is it the business car? Well, I, didn't, I didn't hear anything there. I made it through just fine. We're, we're running it without the business car to start eliminating variables here, and let's see if it makes it around the curve. All right. So it is the business car. Let's try this on the track. Okay, well, that, that's not good. It certainly didn't work. Let's try it again. Let's see what happens. Okay, well, I'm seeing a pattern. Let's pick up one truck after the other and see if one truck is shorting the track. We'll do one after the other here. Make sure it's railed properly. Pick up. Hmm, seems fine. Seems fine. Oh, uh, that seems to work. Uh, yeah, seems to work okay. Let's uh, let's hook some power up and see if I can cause the fault myself. Uh, trying going through this. Yeah, I'm not. This is a going to be a kind of a frustrating problem. If, let's put it back on the track and. Yeah, what the, what the heck? All right, so the first thing I thought is that something, particularly possibly the brake shoes are, yeah, the brake shoes are possibly rubbing on the wheel and it's shorting that way. So that's what I went after first is the brake shoes. And I went and make sure that there was definitely space in between all the brake shoes and the wheels. That probably ought to do it. I've actually had that problem before where the brake shoes or something else on the truck. I mean, if you look here in the back, these are all kind of close. There's a lot of metal really close by. So let's give that a shot. Okay, was any kind of truck interference? Let's hook power up and try this one more time. Okay, found the problem. No, there it is, right there, fun times. Okay, one thing, I'm a grown ass man and for a thousand dollars, I shouldn't have to go to my mother and ask her for clear nail polish. There, that's really, really wrong. So anyway, I have to go to this 1940s, 1930s technique on this thousand dollar car so that it'll go around my track. That's incredibly obnoxious that I have to do this. Incredibly obnoxious that I have to do this in any way. And ah, my mother, for crying out loud. All right, let's try it again. those of you wondering, the car up front is a Overland Models CB&Q power car. It's actually for a different consist, but I thought it would look really nice on here. And, but believe it or not, I haven't run it very much, so it might have had the same problem. So it didn't, though, and it cost a whole lot less than 
this business card did. All right, so here's just some of my conclusions real quick, and I'll let this run around the track while I talk about it, and then I'll let it go on a little bit more so you can see I'm running around. Okay, let's talk about the pros real quick. Firstly, they're beautiful. These are well-crafted cars. There's no doubt about it. They are gorgeous, and someone put some real time into these. Secondly, these are well-crafted. No doubt about it. They run well. Obviously, the coupler heights are everything. I mean, they, they really made sure that these are models for modelers. They're not just good for display. They are good runners, except for the issue that I'll, of course, recap. I have no doubt that these are going to be highly collectible. People already love them. If you post them online, people have a lot of great things to say about them. I think they'll hold their value pretty well. So if you want to use them to store money and to look awesome in the interstitial period, these should work well for you. There are some downsides to this, however, and I think a lot of that centers on the cost. Uh, obviously, the cost is one of them. Uh, this is a highly, highly uh, collectible and well-crafted model, and you're going to have to decide whether this is something you're going to want to put that much money into, especially for the CB&Q, right? You can get a Kata one for a tenth of the price. I think for this price, I shouldn't have had the issue that I had. Come on, brass has been around for so long, and I just shouldn't have these shorting problems anymore. I think these are a bit heavy, and I actually was going to pull this with another locomotive, a brass locomotive, and it was so heavy, it just didn't work, and so I had to use a plastic locomotive. I appreciate the build quality, and there's probably reasons why they did what they did, but to have it this heavy somewhat limits your options in terms of what you can pull it with. I think for this price, the light should either be DCC or dip switch selectable. I mean, I don't think these ditch lights are supposed to be running when it's going forward. There's no reason why they can't use DCC, or if they don't want to use DCC, have dip switches on the underside. Not only that, for this price, it seems like you should be able to select certain compartment lights, turn some of them on, maybe in an office, and then turn the other ones off, something like that. This is a thousand plus dollar car, and I think doing something like that would have pushed it over the edge. Of course, I would have loved DCC to select all these. And go and look at my review of the Marklin. I think it's the VT92 Insider. It had all kinds. It had a separate light for the bathroom, separate light for a hallway, that kind of thing. That is, if you want to push yourself into becoming a truly modern premium model maker, that's the kind of thing you're going to have to do. Um, again, I, I think DCC is the better option, but for you can actually do both. You can actually do dip switch and DCC, and I think that really would have made a huge difference. Just a little bit irk that pretty much when I put it down on the track, it's going to have power going to it, and that's it. I mean, you get what you get. For, for this kind of money, I should be able to have it in my way, so to speak. Okay, so tell me what you think. I want to know. I want to know your thoughts on this. Um, you know, is this something you'd purchase? Something, you know, you'd like to see on your track? Something you'd like to see on your track, maybe in plastic, a little bit more affordable? What do you think about my lights idea? Hey, I, I want to know. Share your thoughts with me. I always appreciate it. As usual, I try to do these because I enjoy them and I hope you enjoy them too. But if you really want to help me out, please like and share. And if you really, really want to help me out, hit the subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. Um, so yeah, like usual, I wish you all the best. If you're a model railroader, happy model railroading. Take care. Talk to you later. See you soon.